What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Dylan Matthews, back at it again with another hometown take. Today, I'm talking about the Atlanta Falcons. It's off-season time, and you know what that means. It's my draft season time. My, one of my favorite times of the year. I get to watch a little, you know, playoff football that won't cause me any heartbreak. And also, I get to talk some Atlanta Falcons and what they need to do to get back to this spot we're in right now in January in the playoffs. How did the Atlanta Falcons get back there and get back to a Super Bowl? The first thing they're going to need is a pass rusher. And this is the draft to get one. I'm going to tell you why I think the Falcons could have a potential to land in in just a minute but first you know we gotta handle some business so like this video comment your thoughts subscribe to the channel check out the first link in my description box to buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel help fuel the Atlanta Falcons to some good drafting some good luck hopefully a couple players fall their way because this player I'm about to mention he gonna have to fall a little bit because he probably not gonna there. But that's okay. We can still, you know, we can still talk about it because I have seen mock drafts and scenarios where this dude falls. So buy me a coffee if you can. Also, check out the second link in my description box to subscribe to the Tough Calls podcast where me and your girl Simone with this biz works. As she likes to say, I'm talking to your favorite former and current athletes, hosts, anchors, reporters, head coaches, all that good stuff. Listen to the pod, like the pod. Download the pod, subscribe to the pod, share the pod out to your friends so they can listen to the pod, like the pod, download the pod, subscribe to the pod, share it out to their friends, friends who will also listen to the pod, like the pod, download the pod, subscribe to the pod, share it out to their friends you don't even know about. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get right into the video. Like I said, we're doing a mob draft for the Atlanta Falcons. Now, today, you know, I got to start y'all off small and work. Work our way up to some bigger things as we get closer and closer to the April draft. We're just going to talk about number eight today. We know we're at number, well, we know all our draft picks, but we know we have the number eight overall pick, and we got a chance to, you know, get somebody special right there. Terry Fontenot definitely hit on Kyle Pitts last year. That wasn't really hard to miss on at number four, but let's see what he does at number eight. A couple more guys, a couple more probable generational talents are going to be off the board. So let's figure out where we could go at number eight. So today we're going to start off with a dream scenario that Kavon Thibodeau, yes, the defensive end out of Oregon, falls to the Atlanta Falcons. Now, before y'all say anything, eat me up in the comments. I know he is probably going to be gone. And I know that there is a, you know, a less than 10% chance we get to pick Kevon Thibodeau. But if we do, we better pick him. Because I have seen some mock drafts where, you know, Kevon Thibodeau has fallen. Even where to the point where we pass up on him. And the Atlanta Falcons is, whew, boy. I don't know what kind of emotions would flow through me if Kevon Thibodeau was on the board and the Atlanta Falcons did not pick him. I wish an Atlanta Falcon would. I wish a Terry Fontenot. Mm. I wish a Terry Fontenot would. Yes. Mm. He would have to be fired immediately. Anyways, I don't think they would let that happen. I think if Kevon Thibodeau was on the board, the Atlanta Falcons scoop him up, and they get their pass rusher hopefully for the next 10 years. But let's talk about Kevon Thibodeau, shall we? So y'all already know he is the... Uh, Pass rusher out of Oregon, coming at a nice 6'5". Um, I didn't get his weight. I should have probably wrote that down. But anyway, he's a big dude, has a chance to get bigger, and that is one of, you know, the knocks on him is that, you know, his frame does need to fill out a little bit more. He's just a little too light to be an NFL defensive end right now, but he can fill out. He's going to lift weights and get bigger and stronger and all that stuff. I ain't worried about all that. When it comes to, you know, getting bigger and stronger, I'm pretty sure he's going to do that. I'm never really worried about uh, a lineman when they say they need to get bigger and stronger. You know, they're gonna get they're gonna get bigger, they're gonna get stronger. So that's not an issue. So, you know, the first thing we think about when we think about you know an edge rusher is you know does the scheme fit? Does is he gonna fit the scheme? Well, 
Dean Peeves, you know, it's like a 3-4 skeleton, but it ain't really a 3-4. Dean Peeves does all sorts of stuff with his stunts and blitzes and all that stuff, but what is one thing Dean Peeves needs? I mean, a lot of defensive coordinators and defense need for their defense to be successful is a pass rusher. And we know the Atlanta Falcons haven't had a competent pass rusher since uh, you can say Vic Beasley in 2016, but we all know that was a fluke. Because Vic Beasley, I don't even think he's in the league right now. Anywho, we haven't had a competent and consistent pass rusher since Jonathan Abraham back in like 2010, or however long ago it was. So we are in dire need of a pass rusher. We need it. Without a pass rush, this Falcons defense is never going to get to where it needs to be. It's never going to get to the point where, you know, our front end is helping our back end. Maybe our back end helps out our front end. We got AJ Terrell, we got a good corner. We need to address that in the draft, too. And we'll, like I said, there are going to be more mock draft videos. we got a long time until April, and I'm going to bring you guys daily content, okay? It's gonna, you're gonna, we're going to get all the videos. We're going to get all the mock drafts. But we need, we need everything on defense. But to start out, I think the Falcons really need to go ahead and spend a get a pass rusher with this eighth overall pick because, I mean, goodness gracious. There's 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 some individual guys this year that have more sacks than the Atlanta Falcons as a team. TJ Watt had 22 and a half sacks this season. The Atlanta Falcons had like 18 or 18 and a half. Yeah. We got dudes by themselves out sacking the whole team. Our whole entire team. Just think about that. And that's why we need a pass rusher, okay? So, Kevon Thibodeau. Let's, let's get back into him. Like I said, um, big dude. He's explosive. Has a major, major first step advantage. Um, his first step is just explosive. So, he can rush effectively from a two-point or three-point stance because his First step is so explosive, and his initial get-off forces opponents into false start penalties. So before he even rush you, he in your head. And before he's even rushing you, he's effective. Because if we're going to have offensive tackles, opposing offensive tackles, so worried that they whoo, start jumping back early and backing them up because of what Kevon Thibodeau could do to them, not what he has done to them, but what he could do to them, that's huge. So that and that is just a big time, big time advantage we could have on the defensive end with that. So first step, explosive. His flexibility. He has a great bend. I've seen on all the scouting reports I've read that his bend and his flexibility is among no other. Like nobody else is seeing his flexibility and his bend. And what we mean by bend and flexibility is you know when he can you know get to the side and like. Do a little hip swivel and get up under that guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, ugh, get up under that offensive tackle. Get up under him, around him, and go sack the quarterback. So he has great flexibility. So he plays with excellent flexibility on the edge. And he's very good at getting up field, bending, and getting to the edge. So he hits you a nice little ugh, get around. He uses speed in his first step and his get off. And then he just whoop, gets up under you and gets to the quarterback. You did. Also, he has a very good hip swivel that I was just talking about to counter when his first move is thwarted. How do you like that word? So when his first move is thwarted, he goes with the lights low counter. He's a hip swivel, and he just counters you, goes around you, and he still gets to the quarterback. So he has multiple moves. He's got a counter move, which is very, very valuable when it comes to talking about defensive ends today. It's, you know, it's one thing to just have speed. It's one thing to just have power. But when those things are taken away, you got to be able to come back with something because we have very good offensive linemen in the NFL today. A lot of good offensive linemen in the league today. And, you know, they if they, they, go, they watch film too and they practice and work too and do what they got to do. So, they're you know, they try to cut off your speed. They're going to try to cut off your power. And if you aren't winning with, you know, what you do best, how are you going to counter that and how are you still going to be effective? Well, Kevon Thibodeau, has counters and he can still find a way to be effective it has done that throughout his college career so speaking of counters he also not only has the hip swivel counter but he got a nice hand fight encounter as well as he's very good 
and uh, hand fighting techniques. Now, on uh, some mock drafts I saw where, you know, he might need to work on this a little bit still, even though he's good at it, you know, obviously you can still find room for improvement and areas of improvement. So, you know, even though his hand fighting is good, I did see a mock draft where he said, you know, he kind of latches on a little bit too much to the offensive lineman instead of, you know, kind of just using his hand fighting and punching abilities to kind of, you know, be engaged for a second and then disengage. And that ties into another one of his weaknesses where he, you know, disengages a little too late sometimes. So getting into some of the, the cons of Kevon, but again, that'll come with time. And the disengaging thing, he, he did it, but he needs to do it with more efficiency and consistency. So that's something that pro coaches will help him out with and help him develop with as well. And I'm sure with Dean Pease at the helm, he gonna make sure he's right when it comes to disengaging, you dig? So hand counters are good, but could use a little work. His hand power though is very, very good as he uses his hips and his hands to get a good advantage and give a good stab and holds the point uh, of attack very well. And this is going into kind of setting the edge as well too. He's very good at setting the edge. So he holds off his offensive lineman as long as he needs to. And then, you know, sometimes he disengages at the right point at uh, right time and gets um, gets to the, the rusher or the quarterback, whichever one. So like I say, he does need to improve at um, disengaging quicker and more efficiently. But moving on, his strength is something that is very good as well. He plays the game with excellent strength. He holds a point of attack and sets the edge like I was touching on earlier. And he deconstructs blocks. And again, some say he disengages as well. Some say he doesn't. We'll go with, you know, he doesn't do it consistently enough at the NFL level right now. But tying into all the disengaging, attack, point of attack and all that stuff, let's talk about his run defending. He is also outstanding at the run, or defending the run, I should say. And this is something I saw all across the board in all of his scouting reports that Kevon Thibodeau thrives at, and that is defending the run. Outstanding at defending the run uses athleticism to get in the gaps and disrupt run plays. And that's big, too, because while it's nice to have a pass rusher, someone who can you know specialize in getting the quarterback, too, you want that person to be versatile, and definitely in the DP's offense, we'll get into versatility in a moment here. But you want that, you want that defensive end and that rusher to be able to be in on run plays too. So he's just not in on obvious passing downs to tee off on the quarterback. But he can also be in the game to stop the run. And Kevon Thibodeau can do that. So he's an every down player. He's an every down edge rusher. So that is key. We can have a dude that can be in to stop the run, get a whole bunch of tackles for loss, and also sack the quarterback. Versatility is big. We need a guy like that in the worst type of way, someone who can set the edge. Because the Falcons, they struggled a lot this year on disengaging, not setting the edge, letting guys get to the corners and break off big plays in the run game as well. And come on, Thibodeau can help us out with that in that area. So he also has good instincts and instinctive feet to find uh, an instinctive feel, not feet, <laughs> but his feet are, I'm sure, are good too. And it's an instinctive feel to find the football. Also, one thing he has improved in while he was in college is making tackles in space. And we know that some of the Falcons, you know, sometimes have a lot of trouble with is getting that initial tackle. You know, sometimes we would see it uh, this year and in previous years too, where we could have a tackle for loss. We miss the tackle, miss maybe miss another tackle, and the guys get a first down or a big play just like that. Kevon Thibodeau has improved with making tackles in space. And so a lot of times, you know, you get your solo tackles off of making tackles in space when the horse sacks. But Kevon Thibodeau this year, 35 solo tackles in just 10 games this year. He had 25 in 2020. That was only in seven games, though. And as a freshman, he had 24, just 24, in 2019. And that was in 13 games. So you see the improvement there. Went from 24 in his freshman year to 25 in just seven games in 2020. To this year with 10 games, he's up to 35. So you see the improvement in solo tackles. And a lot of those tackles, I'm sure, were making tackles in space. So again, that's huge for the Falcons. Someone who can defend the run, um, get to the quarterback, and also make tackles in space 
as well. And while I'm thinking about it, something I also saw in a lot of mock drafts is that he can do a little bit of coverage play too. So, you know, if you are if you need somebody to, you know, watch the flat or guard the running back in the flat, Kevon Thibodeau can do that because of his speed and his agility as well. And we'll touch on that here in a moment. But if you have a running back in the flat, Kevon Thibodeau can track him down and run him down if the quarterback decides to go there. But it wouldn't be smart if Kevon Thibodeau was on the field. You feel me? All right, let's move on to his mobility uh, since we were just talking about his speed. He's got excellent lateral mobility, so moving sideline to sideline, we know Dean Pease likes that. Um, his He effortlessly moves uh, down the line of scrimmage, so that is good, meaning he can be all over the field and he's going to run around, and we're going to talk about his effort in a second, but that helps with effort as well. Shows good flexibility to move laterally back inside after he rushes upfield. So what that means is after he's going upfield, he's using his speed to get around the offensive tackle. Maybe he has to turn back around and get back to the inside to get to the quarterback in that pocket. He's very good at doing that. And that comes along with his relentless pass rush motor. So now that we're talking about that, let's get into his effort. Very high motor, plays the game with outstanding effort. Like I was just saying, he's a relentless pass rusher, extreme, extreme desire to get home to the quarterback, and he plays with very good pursuit on angles on the backside of run play. So even if he gets behind the run play, he's gonna come up, use that motor, use that speed and agility to get back up in the play and track down the runner from behind, maybe, you know, punch out that ball too, cause some fumble. We like that, we need that too. And not only does he have all the, you know, athletic and the physical attributes, but he's got uh, he's got a good knock. He's got a good head on his shoulders with a good football IQ. So he sets up offensive tackles throughout the game, meaning, you know, that he might do a, something in the beginning of the game to set up a counter move towards the end of the game. And he also shows an uncanny ability to also his rush depending on where QBs step up in the pocket. So... Not also is he, you know, just going out there and get to the quarterback, but he's thinking about it too. He said, I'm not just playing checkers, I'm playing chess. So if he sees a QB's, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? If he sees a QB's, what's the word, guys? I can't think of the word. If he sees a QB doing something over and over again repeatedly and stepping up in the pocket the same kind of way every time, he's going to alter his rush to adapt to that and do what he has to do to get the quarterback down. So... He ain't just got the bronze, he's got the brain too. Um, and let's also talk about the main thing, which is his versatility. We know you gotta be versatile playing DMP's offense because he not DMPs just don't have one type of scheme. He got he's doing a lot. And we heard um dudes talking about on the defensive side for the Falcons how you know how complicated this DMP's defense is. And DMP's talked about he had to scale his scheme back. He couldn't, you know, unleash the whole scheme because, you know, the personnel, and we, we know the personnel is why our record was what it was. But anyway, you got to be versatile. You got to be smart to play in this DMP's defense. And Kevon and Kevon Thibodeau is just that. So it's the ideal fit for a hybrid scheme. DMP's a scheme, a hybrid scheme. And he could be a 4-3 defensive end, which could be great. We can use that at times. But he could also be a true 3-4 outside linebacker who could play some wide nine as well. And he has all the tools to be an edge rusher. I mean, that's that's what the Atlanta Falcons need. I mean, that's Kavon, just wrap up Kavon Thibodeau, put a bow on it, and send him to us. But, again, we're talking about he could be by the time number eight comes around. But let's talk about a scenario where maybe he's not. So the Jacksonville Jaguar, Jaguars are picking number one overall. They could go Thibodeau. They, they need about everything. But they could go offensive line. They could go, out of doubt, they go wide receiver. But they could go Aiden Hutchinson. We do have him on the board as well. That'll help, you know, hopefully soften the blood and help him help Thibodeau get to us. Um, but yeah, Jacksonville Jaguars could go a multiple. A multitude of places they could go corner they could go um linebacker maybe they could go um they could go offensive line so it's not it's not a guarantee that the jaguars go cave on thibodeau but they could the detroit lions could also go thibodeau if you know maybe Aiden hutchinson gets selected by the jaguars maybe they come back 
with Kevon Thibodeau because a lot of people have been mocking Aiden Hudges into the lines, but if he's gone at number one, maybe they get that consolation prize, which wouldn't be a huge consolation prize. It would be, you know, still very good prize. And Kevon Thibodeau at number two. Houston, Texas at three. Now, they should not get a defender. You know, their biggest needs, could quarterback, obviously, with Deshaun Watson. You know, still don't know what's going on with that. They need a corner. They do need a D lineman, but they could go offensive line as well. A lot of people um, have been saying, um, I forget the offensive lineman name, but, you know, one offensive lineman could be going to them. The New York Jets, they're a wild card. They could do whatever. They could go corner. They could go wide receiver. Um, they could go, however, um, what's, now nah, I'm forgetting everybody's name. One of my, Kyle Hamilton. There we go. They can get Kyle Hamilton at safety because they also do need a safety. So a lot of different places the Jets can go. Uh, the Giants, they could also go offensive linemen, help protect Daniel Jones. They could go edge, though, however. And um, they could maybe go for another playmaker, wide receiver, since none of their wide receivers kind of panned out this year. Ooh. Um, Carolina Panthers, they could go quarterback. This could be, you know, a situation where they pick Matt Corral. They don't know what they have in um, Sam Darnold. They don't know what they have in any of the quarterbacks, honestly. So we can see them go quarterback. We can go see them offensive line. They could go corner as well. Um, Giants pick again at seven. So maybe here they go, edge rush. Who knows? And they got us at eight. But again, could be a scenario where maybe Jaguars go offensive line. The Detroit Lions go Aiden Hutchinson. The Houston Texans go O line. The Jets go corner. The Giants go offensive line. The Carolina Panthers go quarterback. Or maybe Houston goes um, quarterback. So that notches one down. Um, Carolina Panthers, they go quarterback. New York Giants, maybe they go wide receiver too. Uh, maybe they go wide receiver. Um, and then that leaves Kevon Thibodeau to us with only Aiden Hutchinson going off the board so far as far as edge, edge rushers go. So there's a scenario there again. Could be... Could be a long shot, but this is a good defensive draft. We'll find somebody at eight, whether it's an edge rusher or a safety, whoever. I'll get into all the mock draft scenarios as we move along and get closer to the draft, but that is my case for Kevon Thibodeau. If we can get Kevon Thibodeau, that should be a quick, fast, easy decision for Terry Fondo and the Atlanta Falcons because we've been needing a pass rush, and I think – Kevon Thibodeau is the first step to getting that defensive line back right. And then you could also, I need to uh, touch on this, but hello, get some help for Grady Jarrett. Maybe make him stay, because who knows if Grady actually wants to stay at this point. But anywho, that's my mock, uh, that's my mock draft where we get Kevon Thibodeau. Hopefully, he falls to us, but we'll see. Buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel, guys, to help fuel the Atlanta Falcons to a great NFL draft. Maybe come on, Dividend Files. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also, check out the second link in my description box to subscribe to the Tough Cause podcast. Again, I know Kevon Thibodeau could be a long shot, but got a, got a dream, right? Can believe it. We'll see. But that's Kevon Thibodeau. Hopefully he falls to us. If not, we'll talk. We'll talk about some, some other possibilities for the Atlanta Falcons. But again, guys, like this video, comment your thoughts, subscribe to the channel. Stay true to Atlanta. Believe in Atlanta. Go Falcons. So I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.